But you know what they say, uh, 90% of the work takes, the first 90% of the work ten, takes 10% of the time. The last 10% of the work takes 90% of the time. And welcome to a new episode of uh, Digital Coffee Marketing Brew, and I'm your host, Brett Dicer. And this week, we're going to be talking about, well, just sales engineering, sales in general, also neuro-linguistic performing tech psychology, but it's mostly just sales and that type of actual thing we're going to be talking about. But it's going to be interesting with my guest, Nico, here, and he is an engineer, sales engineer in the telecommunications sector for over a decade. He also is effective communicator and understanding about human behavior is his subject matter. So Nico has a cornerstone in the sales approach. He quickly learned to look by leveraging his techniques and establishing rapport with his clients. So welcome to the show, Nico. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for having me. Thank you. And the first question I ask all my guests is, are you a coffee or a tea drinker? Absolutely coffee, but I do drink like... I'm drinking tea as we speak, but I'm a coffee addict. Gotcha. And then I gave a brief summary of your expertise. Can you give your listeners a little bit more about what you do? Absolutely. So by trade, I used to be a sales engineer for more than a decade, so about 12 years, high in sales telecommunications. And I used to sell to government and big corporations. About 13 months ago, I left my corporate job starting my company where I have basically I am a digital marketing agency. So we I help content creators from podcaster, coach, business owner, e-commerce, brick and mortar owners on how to create better content. On the first hand, I help them with the sales technique that I've learned over the years. So psychology and LP, how to create rapport. And on the other side, I also integrate AI into their content creation workflow. So we we figure out what's the end result, what do they want, what's the goal that they have over the next year. And then we build a strategy around this. We create better content, more content, better quality content, and we integrate AI in order to be able to streamline because AI has great tools to speed up the process, like brainstorming, content creation. So there's... A lot of tools that you can use depending on the content that you're creating. But yeah, that's uh, that's what I do. Gotcha. And then, I mean, how has artificial intelligence transformed that? Because we've all seen it. We've all tried to figure it out. But how how has it really transformed the content creators plus the content side of everything? So first and foremost, I'm a content creator. I've been creating content for years. I generate probably five to 10 million views a month on my content. So this is, I do this full time. I post six, seven times, eight times a day on multiple platform, on all platforms basically. But yeah, this AI has done a lot of things for us. Like let's start by saying that AI is not replacing human beings just yet. There's, you have to understand where AI fits in your content creation workflow. You need to understand the capacity, but it has a lot of limitation. And, you know, we need people that will watch your content, watch you because they like you, because they feel that you're authentic, because you resonate with them. They can learn from something. They see you as an expert. And that's something that AI cannot duplicate. So where can AI help? Like me personally, I use ChatGPT, 10, 12 times a day. I use softwares like CapCut where that do the auto caption. I do a lot of, even though I record on high-end cameras like the one I'm using right now, I do tend to do a lot of my editing on my phone because it's so quick. I use Premiere, but if I'm not close to my very expensive laptop, if I'm on my phone, I can do everything off my phone and edit it there. And CapCut has great AI shortcuts and tools within the application like auto caption create really cool animations but the the thing is you, you the, somebody told me that the other day and i couldn't agree with him more it, it's all about what you give to the ai if you put garbage into ai garbage is going to be spit out at back at you you need to understand like i've I'm an author. I've written my first book. I'm writing another one. I've taken multiple courses on copywriting. So I understand when I'm asking something from AI, let's say, help me write a blog on a specific subject. 
I will give it a lot of information. The audience, I know what I'm looking for. I'm going to brainstorm with it, find good ideas, and then it will give me somewhat of a structure. From that structure, I probably remove 85% of it, 90% of it, and then I write over what they provided because they give you a nice flow. Like most people don't understand what a hook is. Most people don't understand that we have six seconds to capture the attention of someone, which is why reels are so popular today. But AI can kind of help you define this and then you have to put your human touch to it. You have to transform that to your sauce because you can tell. I can tell right away somebody that's listen that that did a post, a blog on Facebook, their website, LinkedIn. I see it right away if it's AI or not. It's super easy to spot. So you need to be able to restructure you use the structure, but you reward it in a way that is yours. So I really, to me, AI is a great tool for brainstorming. Like I treat it like it's an, one of my employees. I say please and thank you because I'm very polite. I will ask, please help me with this. Thank you when it did. But it's really like a part of my brainstorming team. And it can give you anything from ideas, what's trending right now, what type of videos are doing well. It can give you ideas. You could say, write me. 10, 10 ideas on one specific subject and it will help you. You can do, I'm sure you're aware, you can take long form content like this podcast, for example, and chop it off into shorter videos. That being said, I've tested them all. Opus.io is the best. Opus Pro, sorry, is the best, but it's still not that great. Like if I have a choice of doing the editing myself or having one of my guys do it, I'd rather use them. But... If you don't have the money to invest that much and you want to do it yourself, you don't necessarily have all the skills, it can give you a great structure you can start with and then edit what it shows that should go viral or at least get you more views. It can help you with your SEOs, your titles, your description, the hashtags that you can use. It can tell you what's trending, analyzing, trending. You can ask him, like, why why did copy a video? Why did it do well? Why did that video, even if it doesn't belong to you, why did it go well? And it will give you an opinion. So it's it's great to complement what you're doing, but it's not replacing you as a human being. You need to know what you're asking, what you want, and how to formulate it properly, whatever the output is. Got you. And so... I mean, it seems like that's the thing. It's like search. I mean, if you type in bad search like terms, you'll get bad search items back. So how how do how do they help, how do they start to understand how to do better? I guess AI or or be, ask better questions for AI. Uh, as a content creator, well, you know, you're lucky because you got guys like me that's been in technology mostly most most of their lives that really enjoy this stuff. Like if we take Chat GPT, as per two or three weeks ago, they released a new update where you can now create Chat GPT's bot yourself. You can, I can literally create my own little software within Chat GPT. And the day that I discovered this, I created about eight or nine of them. So right now, you could tell me, you could say, that, okay, I want to write a blog. I trained that specific Chat GPT to ask you proper questions. Like, let's say, what's your audience? What age? What's the tone? What's the tonality? It, it will, I, I've built in specific questions because I've been doing it for so long. I understand the information they need in order to spit you information. Same thing goes, like I created a, a module that's for making thumbnails, doing reels, like how do you formulate the reel, video scripts, bio, like how to write a bio because I do help my clients get on podcasts and certain TV radio shows. So having a great bio is a must. So you have guys like me that will des that will make it easy on you. But if you want to learn, you just have to do it. There's, you know, making a thumb, make as much as Chad, G Chad GPT right now tells me that they can create thumbnail. They're terrible. You, they can create a great background picture, but I normally take that background picture. I shove it into Canva. And then I do the I do the um, the caption myself because I can do a way better job, but you have to test. Like I had to test it six seven hours I think last time it came out, and I'm like, yeah, it's still not there yet. Still not there yet. Mm. I mean, so everybody, it's still 
always look over it. It's the human touch that's going to make it better. But AI can help you get most of the way. You just need to finish it, basically. But you know what they say, 90% uh, of the work takes, the first 90% of the work ten, takes 10% of the time. The last 10% of the work takes 90% of the time. So even though I can, I can have a very clear ID to say, okay, I want to, I could make a service description for uh, a service that I sell customers off my website. I say, okay, this is what I have in mind. But then once you provide it context, it will spit you something you still need to take that and probably spend 10 times as much time as you just did in order to make it great. Because at, again, you, we have to remember that AI is creating very plain type of content. As much as you can tell, make it humorous, make it more professional, make it more this, it's still blend. You need to add something to it. And it all depends if you're comfortable writing producing videos it really really depends what your your skill set is which is why when i work when i strategize with my client when i work with my clients i always take the natural skill approach like what are you good at what re what are you how do you normally communicate with people and let's make that better and integrate ai to help you create more content faster and should content creators like use the different AI like systems. You got Bard, you got chat GPT. I think jet GP is a little bit better. And you also have perplexity for research. You have Claude, you have Gronk for Twitter. They're trying to do like, which one should they use? Cause it's all confusing. Like which one's better for me? Which one actually has the best results right now? Chat GPT is by far, if you're talking straight up command line type of interaction where you're Backing, you're kicking it back and forth up to now from all the ones that I've tested by far chat GPT is the best, but Google is in the run too. And a, a what it has a thousand times more the employees than all open AI has altogether. Plus uh, Microsoft this week, I think it was this week or last week announced that they hired the old, the, the founder of open AI that created chat GPT to come work for them. So Everybody's in the run right now. It's really just that chat GPT started longer before everybody else. So they have the advantage of being there longer, but that doesn't necessarily mean like we all remember what happened to Blackberry, right? They were the first really professional cell phone and they let that one slip big time. Like right now they don't exist anymore. So hopefully they're smart, but as a user, there's so many options that are coming up. It's just the tip of the iceberg right now. And it's command line. Like they're, they're going to add modules. They're going to add their certain sauce, like their certain feel to it. But at the end of the day, it's going to be the same. Like they're going to make it so easy for users to be able to use all the time. So at the end of the day, that's all it is. But right now, chat GPT by far. And how should they start? Let's say no, they haven't really dipped their toes in. How should they start doing this? Because there is a process to understand yep. how to do AI. So how should they start? Right now, suggestion, choose whatever command line, like interaction type of AI that you like. But I'd suggest ChatGPT 3.5. The, the older version is free. You can literally go on their website and you can sign in. It's free. You can use it all you want. You're always going to be at the back of the queue your interface is going to be slower because guys like me that pay, they prioritize my traffic, but you can still start testing it. You can literally start today. And my biggest suggestion, if you're starting, just start asking questions as in, if you understand what your niche is, let's say that you're, you do, you're a podcaster and you specialize in business, especially business growth. Awesome. Chat GPT, you go in. What are the most popular subjects that I can speak about considering that I'm a podcaster, that his audience, his target audience are technologically savvy people that want to grow their business? It really is just that simple. Like when I, when I Google something, I ask massive questions. Like I, I, I ask questions like it was somebody I'm asking a question, treat it the exact same way. Just start yeah. it and you'll see what it spits out. And, at, you know, the more you use your AI, the more you 
thumbs up, thumbs down, the answer that it gives you, it actually learns. That's the beauty of AI is it learns. So just use it. Just play around with it. Use it, use it, use it and see where it goes. I mean, we're seeing it even on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is now offering in the premium side using AI to help with your bios and other things as well. So should we have like an ethical concern about AI? Because a lot of times it kind of does copy some of the more graphical things a little bit too much. We're kind of like, is this really, or scammers are figuring out how to use it to dub people's voices and make them sound like their own family members and stuff. Should we actually have some ethical concerns around AI? Because it's going to get smarter. We all know that. It's just the yeah. problem is how smart is it going to get? You know, first and foremost, the fir the, the last update from uh, ChatGPT has a copyright protection. So unlike the 3.5 version, the 4.5 turbo version has a new implementation where you are protected. So they're not stealing anything anymore because absolutely you can do that. You, you can see that. And the voice freaks me. It, it kind of creeps me out that I could literally take this, the MP3, when it comes out, take it, shove it into a video. There's um there's a platform. Okay, now that bothers me. I can't remember what it's called. It's called uh, InVideo AI. You can literally create, I can dub somebody else's voice. All they need is about 30 seconds of clip of just MP3 and they'll copy your voice. Then I can take your face into another software and copy your face and have it say whatever the, whatever I want. Ethically, is it problematic? Yeah, because at one point it's gonna be extremely hard for us to know what is actually real and what isn't. But at the same time, right now, there's a massive difference. You can tell. Like I'm part of, um, I'm part of a master group where it has some of the biggest content creators on the planet. And they're always talking about this. You know, they're always trying to make it easy for them to create more and more content. And one of the guys did exactly that. He dubbed himself. He dubbed, he dubbed this voice. And it is the best software out there that is not cheap. It is very expensive. And it's okay. Like I can tell right away, like the shoulders don't move properly. You can tell like there, there's the way the face works. That's kind of robotic. And even the voice doesn't have the spump to it like it doesn't have is that going to change in the next couple of years that's a possibility that's a very strong possibility but i still don't think anytime soon content creators like me for example that have a very specific style like you recognize the way i am on camera can it duplicate that i don't think so because i freestyle so much there's so much learning into what i have there's so much techniques and what I put together when I create my content that I don't think so, but maybe I'm wrong. There's no way to know because we're just hitting the tip of the iceberg, but it can be scary though. Cause I grew up in the, I was born in the eighties, man. I remember Terminator and you know, as much as back then, you, you, I don't know how old you are, but I'm in my, I'm 41. I look at back at this. It's like, Oh, this is such science fiction today. I'm like, we talk about the singularity all the time. Elon Musk is like, hey, guys, we need to be careful because this is a matter of time. And human beings are not that smart. We cannot compute the amount of information that even computers, just what you have, just this, is so much faster than you by light years. So you can't compete with that. But I hope that the authenticity level is what keeps us apart from AI. So for those content creators, should should you say, yeah, use AI, but understand how to audio edit, video edit, write a little bit. Should there be some of that type of human interaction for it as well? Because it's great that AI can help us automate a lot of things and make us more efficient. But should you understand that side of it as well? A hundred percent. A million. Uh, I could not say a million times. Yes. And you, you have to think it this way. When you are... When you're creating content, have the end goal in mind. Know what you're creating. Like take you and I, for example, you've asked me about six questions, six or seven questions. I took three, four, five minutes to answer them. I know that the way I'm answering your questions, you can go around, go back to the questions, cut your question out, take my three to five minutes, make a, make a three to five minute video, medium length video, 
and you can make a reel or two reels out of every single one of them. I know when I'm creating content that this, I always have that in mind. If I do a podcast with someone in my head, I'm like, here's a reel, here's a reel, here's a reel, here's a reel. So you have to have the understanding of what's the end product and reverse engineering from reverse engineer from there to say, okay, what does it take for me to manually edit this? And when you start understanding the analytics, so if I did a very good reel that made me a million views, let's say, then I'm going to go back and I'm going to say, okay, why did it do well? I will break it down. I will look at it. I'm like, okay, it's the way I recorded. It's the, my hook at the beginning, the words I use, the music, the title, the hashtags. I can look at it. I can look at any reels now and tell you why it worked, why it didn't work. I can tell you why it worked as well. You have to have that understanding of how to edit those videos because let's say I'm recording a video off of my phone. I don't just record a video looking forward. I know that I'll say a sentence here, then I'll say another sentence with my phone to the side. I'm conscious that if the sun is there, that's going to have a, a shadow on me. So I'm going to move the cell phone to the other side. But I, I am recording knowing that every five, six seconds, our attention span is so short that I have to move the phone, move different angles, start walking, sit down. So if you understand your end product, you understand all the process, then you can put in where AI fits. But it's so much easier in post-production when you record properly in the first place. When you record for the end result and not try to create an end result of just a regular video and try to make it look good after. Mm -hmm. And then how should content creators or podcasters or whoever like have that rapport with their community because you, on, on one of the goals is you're trying to create a community obviously because if you have nobody then there's no point in doing this so how should they start to do that with the tools and ai or whatever that they have fantastic question because this is so overlooked like everybody talks about a niche about what it what's a niche but how many people out there can answer these questions off the top of your head? What sex are they? What demography, like your demography, you need to know what sex, what age, what platform, where do they work? What type of salary do they make? Do they have kids? Do they have a family? Those are extremely simple. But then if you start asking, what are they, their pains? What keeps them up at night? Why are they on social media in the first place? What are they trying? Are they trying to fix a problem? Are they trying to get better? Are they there for education? Then you start looking at what are they, their behavior? How do they buy? Like if you're selling a service, how do they buy? It takes seven points of contact with one prospect customer in order for them to buy from you. That's seven pieces of content that they need to interact with. So how do you get into their mind? This is why knowing who your niche is is so important it starts there but then you need to start crafting a message around this knowing who your audience is let's say we talk about tech people the people that are trying to grow their business with technology that's your niche cool what keeps them up at night i am not i it, i'm spending too much time creating content i need help i cannot hire a team right now i cannot afford it so what are the ways that i can go ahead and mainstream like streamline and optimize my line okay cool ai nice now i know this okay which ai am i going that's the guy i want to talk to so as an expert i come in and i start crafting message around hey have you you're trying to create more content awesome why are you still using a platform like zoom to record your podcast you can't record higher than 720p and if you understand that reels are king you need to have a high quality image. So why are you using 720p maximum when a platform like the platform we're using right now, 1080p and does local recording? So th this is, see how I know what their problem is they're trying to create. So those are the things you, you need to, to get in to have in mind now. How do you help them? How do you create a message around that that will help them? And then you need to package it through branding in a way that it looks good, that people can recognize you. So... Those are the steps, but understanding your niche, you could have all the rapport in the world. You could be awesome at creating deep, meaningful conversations with people or interactions and connections. 
But if you don't under, if you're not speaking to the right people, they're not going to listen to you. So you're just wasting your time. If your messaging is off, if you're not comfortable in front of that camera, if it shows that you're not authentic, that you're hesitating, people are not going to resonate. And science says six seconds of attention span that we have now. I would argue that it's probably more like two or four, between two and four, depending because of reels. You don't have a lot of time to capture somebody's attention that doesn't follow you right now. You really need to be very good at capturing their attention right off the right off the bat. So you need to know how to craft that message. It's crucial that you understand this. So know your people, know the people, know your target audience. Have a very very well crafted message, and make sure that it looks good. This is all about branding, right? Mm. It also varies between generation. I would say like Gen X and boomers are highly likely to be married. Millennials, Gen Z are highly unlikely to actually be married as well. So it really, you're right. It really does like it skews so differently between the generations. It's very interesting. And you go even further than that when you start looking at platforms. So you you got a TikTok out there that mostly caters. I, I, I never cater any content to people below 18 because my content is mature so you cater to people between 18 and 30 this is the most popular place on tiktok they need extremely short videos reels that are pop 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 right to the point so this is an understanding is it where your audience is because more and more people in their 30s 40s 50s are joining tiktok but nothing compared to a facebook for example that's the oldest social media platform People are older. People there are more 35, 55. The younger generation does not use Facebook. They they ditched that a long time ago. So you have it, you have two extremes, right? You have your TikTok that's for younger generation, really fast, fast, fast video. Then you have a Facebook that you can actually use and say, I'm gonna you can you I've been successful creating three to five minute videos on YouTube. Uh, not on YouTube, on Facebook, sorry. I've been very successful with reels. I've been successful with typed content. So just me writing, I'm comfortable. It works with pictures. So it really integrates both because the older generation, my age, is used to seeing all type of contents. People that are 16, 15, 18 right now, they don't read anything. They don't read books. They don't care about this, right? So then you have an Instagram that's in the middle. That caters to some of the people on TikTok, that caters to some of the people on Facebook. I love to Instagram the best. It's my favorite platform. But it, it kind of takes both. And then you have a YouTube that's more educational. Like mo so I've been able to do to learn so much over the past 15 years just off of YouTube. How many times do you go to YouTube with a question like, hey, I don't know how to do this. Bah. Hey, cool video. You sit down, you're like, oh, there you go. I know how to do it. This is br YouTube is brilliant. They have captured the education system, like the education sector so well. But then you have a LinkedIn that's meant for professional. So reels don't do well on LinkedIn. Pictures, not really. Videos, not really. Articles, articles do well. And blog post style posts do well too. Because they're professional, they're used to reading. So not only do you have to understand your audience, you have to understand where they are and depending on the platform, because I can have somebody on Instagram and that's on TikTok and Instagram too, but my reel that does well on TikTok does not necessarily go well on Instagram. So there's a lot of intelligence behind, there's a lot of work to be, if you want to be successful, you really need to know who your audience is, why, where they are and what resonates with them. Not just your message, but the format that you're using to trying to reach them. I mean, it leads me into like podcasting stats because they're they're getting better, but they're still not the best. I mean, I have to use like several different like chartable and everything else just to figure out like who's doing what. So how do how how do we help podcasters? Because I feel like that's the hardest part is figuring out who's actually listening to you because I feel like I have to go to six different sites just to understand a piece of my own picture of what's going on with people listening to me. Which, which platform do you use? If you don't mind me asking. 
uh, for actually hosting it or just I'm on every I'm on from anything from Spotify to Apple Podcasts. Well, but that's your distrib- but that's your distribution. I mean, distribution is you, captive. Where do you captivate. host it? Okay. Yeah, it's captivate. And they do a pretty so, good job of telling like people like unique people. So yep. I kind of understand things, but still, I, I still have to like use Chartable or use something yep. else to get other parts of the picture as well. So, you know, I, I think we'll take it way back. W- when it comes to podcasts, one thing that I've realized with doing podcasts for almost four years, like three and a half years now is what's the intent of your podcast? What what are you trying to accomplish with your podcast? When I first started, I wanted a F- Joe Rogan type of podcast. I've I've been in sales. I fought all over North America. So I'm, I know a lot of people. So I know a lot of interesting people. And in my head, I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to show there with two microphones, a recorder, and pow, we're going to make magic happen. Sometimes it works. Most of the time it does not. So what's your intent? Are you using uh, your podcast to make you feel better, to have into, to meet people? Because that's one of the beautiful things about podcasts. You can't really try to approach somebody you don't know and say, hey, bro, do you, do you want to sit down and have a conversation? People are going to look at you like you're crazy. But tell them that you're going to shove a camera in their face and a microphone. They're like, oh, yeah, absolutely. So I've had the chance to sit down with world-renowned people just because I told them I would shove a, multiple cameras, lighting, microphones in their face. But believe me, if I approach them like a weirdo to say, hey, bro, I want to sit down with you because I think you're so cool, they would have ran away from me, right? So what's the intent of your podcast? Are you just trying to meet people or are you really trying to help your audience? Are you really trying to cater to cater to what they want? And this is where the magic happens. When you start, when, when you start understanding that at the end, it's all about your niche. It's not about you, but it's about your niche. So what do they want? What are they looking for? What type of help, information, education, what are they looking for? Then you realize that your, your podcast is a marketing platform. It is one of the best marketing platform that you can have. But at the same time, to everybody out there that runs a podcast or that's thinking about doing one or that's been running one for a while, I can tell you long-form content is dying. Less and less people are looking at long-form content. More and more people are looking at reels. So this is what I was saying earlier. If you come at this from a logical standpoint and say, I will record my podcast of an hour. I will try to ask 10 questions and I will let my guests go as much. You gauge the length, you let them, you challenge them, you you bring the conversation on, you carry it. But you start from the understanding that I will ask 10 questions. 10 questions means I should at least have 10 reels, which means I should be able to create three three, four good three to five minute videos are going to be great. Now, once you have that, you start to, under, you, you think about it this way to say, okay, long form content is longer to produce. It takes longer to edit. The post-production is longer. You have to find guests. It, there's a lot of work that goes into a, po- a good quality podcast. So you might as well utilize it. You might as well take all the stuff that you can out, you can get out of it. But the the beauty is that I can get a good reel. I can make a reel today and get 10, 30, 50, 100,000 views by the end of the day. Try to do that with a long form content, with a long form uh, podcast. Extremely hard because most people, if they don't know you, if they never been interacted, remember what I said about seven points of contact in marketing. So if your goal is to have more viewership, on your podcast that means that you need to interact they need to see seven pieces of your content in order for them to say you know what i'm gonna go check out your podcast okay that means seven reels so you have to set you have to create seven reels in order to get one person to go see your podcast that's the understanding so when you're creating your podcast understand that it needs to be good the conversation needs to be great you need to have great hosts but really try to conceptualize your podcast in a way that you're already chopping it down in your head. You're already knowing what the end product is. Because think about it. Like I, I create videos every day. Like I was just creating one as uh, just before I jumped on. It took me about 20 minutes to make. 
if it goes well, I'll make a hundred thousand views on it, fifty thousand views, maybe more. And it took me twenty minutes to make. When's the last time you made a podcast in twenty minutes, from end to finish, and you had fifty to a hundred thousand views on it? I, I'm ready to guarantee that you can't name one time that it happened. Because unless you have millions of followers, this does not happen anymore. So what is the best way to get the more eyes possible on your content is to create reels. And then through the use of call to action, you develop a strategy to say these, I know that these type of content will grab as much people in my niche as possible. Then they're going to go to my profile because I'm going to tell them, Hey, like, and follow if you like this reel, then they're going to go on my, on my page and they're going to see my evergreen content, the stuff that I do every day. And then through, Hey, you like this video, go to my YouTube channel. You'll see the full podcast of this video. So this is what's intelligent. So once you figure out where your audience is, you can start producing the content that they want to see. And then through call to action, you tell them, go see my other, once they interacted a few, with a few of your video, go see my YouTube channel. Cause my full, my full podcast is there, my website, wherever, wherever you want. But this is where like, I call them social media funnel. You, you funnel people because I want more viewership on my podcast and I, I started here, right? So you disseminate the whole way through. You have a strategy that is well-structured and then you can start to experiment to see what are those videos that they want to see? W what's my secret sauce that will attract people that I can send to wherever I want them to go? And so, I mean, looking ahead for future trends, like where is this going? Is we're going to see more automation, more AI? Are we going to see more dubbing happening? Because I feel like people are starting to dub themselves a little bit in case they mess up something. Are we going to see more of that, of more of quicker content and more just maybe automated content, to be honest with you? Oh, 100%. If you look at uh, faceless videos, for, for about a month, I, I, I started creating almost faceless videos every day. They don't, I don't like it, but I wanted to be aware of how they are done so that if I have a client that wants to do it, I'm like, no problem. Here you go. This is how we do it. But you don't need to do anything. I can literally start right. I can, I can take one of my reels that I've produced already. I can put it into a transcriber. It's going to give me the text. I'm going to take that text. I'm going to say, I'm going to go on chat GPT and say, Hey, write me a three minute script video meant for YouTube with this information. No problem. It starts writing. I correct it. Uh, I make it the way I want. Then I go to an app like in video AI, they do text to video. They can sell you, you can have a pain, you can have a higher level of, of, um, of their software. Like the higher platform allows you to take videos that are copyrighted and they will add it as B-roll. So you can I can literally create faceless videos from a few words. L now text the video. They start adding the video. There's an narrator speaking. Eh, it's a woman. I don't want a woman. I want a guy. Eh, that guy has an English accent. I want an American accent from the South. This is what I want. You can literally put all those things you say hey, can you add some caption can you know what i don't like that video you click on it and then it gives you a bunch you can do choices by keywords and then start so you literally don't have to do show your face anymore at all if you want you can easily do that now what type of people are you are you gonna attract what are you looking to do like a lot of people out there and i know you know this but a lot of people out there just share other people's content that's all they do you never see their faces. All they do, they take other people's content, they shove it through a caption, uh, something like CapCut. Takes them five minutes, they redo the video, and then boop, they post it. That's all they do. 100% of their, and they have 100,000, 200, 500, a million followers. And you know they make money doing this because they have ad revenue through this. So they're make, they could be making 10 grand a month just off that channel. So is it... What do you, again, at the end of the day, what is your, what's your intention? What are you trying to create? Are you trying to help people? I help men. I love to help men. I believe in men. I want to help them because content creation for men is hard. If you have a message, it's hard. 
you can have a woman, a good looking woman with the same message. She's going to smoke you every time on looks alone. If like me, I, I'm a work, I, I'm a, I'm a gym rat. If I started recording all my videos without a shirt on, I would attract more viewership. But is it the type of viewership that I want? No, absolutely not. I want people to follow me because they like what I'm saying, not for the way that I look. So what's your intent? It always comes down to that, right? What's your intent? At the end of the day, what are you trying to accomplish? Because if you don't want to show your face, if you want to have faceless platform, AI can do pretty much everything for you. You still have a bunch load of editing to do, a bunch load of understanding to know. You, The guys that are really successful at this didn't start yesterday and start posting anything. As we said earlier, garbage in, garbage out. But once you have that understanding, you can do it. Take time. It takes a lot of time to do faceless videos. But you don't have to show, you don't have to have any talent. If all you want is to educate people on certain subject that doesn't require your face, no problem. You can do it. But I believe that, you know, as a sales guy, and I was an authentic sales guy. I've never sold, I would never sell something to somebody that they don't need just because I can make money. I'm not like that. I stand by what I sell. And I'm all about creating relationship. I'm all about the connection. So what do you want? If you're trying to help, AI is a great tool. If you don't care, you just want to make money, AI can do most of the job for you. So to figure out what you actually want, you want to make money or you want to be authentic or a little bit in between. But you can do both. There, there's no, it's just that there, if your goal, so let's say that you're a podcaster. AI has not replaced podcasters yet and won't replace you guys for a long time. So how, so if you understand that you want to create content, you want to be appealing, you want to resonate with your audience. Let's say that all your work has been done. You understand who your niche is. How do you package yours? How do you prepare your message? You need to get better in front of that camera. You need to practice it. You need to post all the time. You need to have the balls to say, Today, I'm going to post something extremely personal. I'm going to, at least I'm going to try. You know, my old, my old uh, PR firm made me record four or five live stream every day for two months. That was nuts. It took me three hours of preparation to do a half an hour, but I was alone in front of that camera 30 minutes a day. And I would live stream on LinkedIn, YouTube. Facebook, Instagram. I was running, literally running two cameras, two cell phones, and three sets of microphones that were interconnecting everything together. And I did that every day. Y you know how much crap I've got on those things? You know how many times I fumbled? You know how, many, how stupid I looked on those streams? And people can criticize you right there. You're in the middle of a speech and there's people making fun of you on your chat box on the side. But can you really be that good without that portion? No. How else are you going to get better if you don't listen to yourself? And I know you know this. It's cringing. I, did, I hate hearing my voice. When I edit my videos, I remove my sound. I don't like to hear myself talk at all. But I had to. There's a... If you notice, I don't have filler words. I don't... Um, I just stop talking and I, I just think about what I have to say. But this took me years of practice of me watching my videos and just saying, oh, bro, stop it. You know, that's a word I use. That's an expression I used to say all the time. You know, you know, you know. And then you're like, it's very annoying. You need to stop saying that. So again, what do you want? What's the end product? Are you, if you're trying to help people, you need to be authentic. In order to be authentic, you need to feel comfortable in front of that camera. You need to master your subject. You need to know what you're doing, what you're saying, how you're going to say it, and who you're talking to and which platform to use. Right now, you got to learn it. There's nobody else that can do it for you. You, can, you have guys like me that can help you get better, faster, with a better strategy, but you will have to record. You will have to put your content out there. You will have to be out there for people to judge you. And God knows people are going to judge you. It's very easy 
to be a couch quarterback and criticize everything that you do when you're hiding behind a computer or you're hiding behind a screen, right? Oh yeah. It's, I mean, you're right. I took, I think it took one po after a while, it took one podcast episode to understand that I said us and ums too much. And I had to <laughs> stop myself from saying it. And I also hated here. I also hate editing myself. I still yeah. have the sound on. I just had to get used to it. <laughs> But yeah. I wanted to make sure that my sound was the best I could make it. So I struggled through it. But now it doesn't bother me anymore. But it took yeah. quite a bit of hours to actually figure out, which I think it says about to be an expert, it takes about 10,000 hours for a person to become an expert at something. You're bang on. And there's no other way around it. Like there's, um, you know, you look at guys like Alex Ormosi, you look at guys like Gary V. Alex Ormosi says between him and his wife, they post 250 times a week. Gary V says 64 times a day. So I look at guys like that and I'm like, you know what? They're absolutely right. I met a guy uh, this year at a gym in in Austin, like really weird coincidence, but... I asked him, I'm like, hey, bro, I, I know exactly who you are. We start talking and I'm like, I, I did some content with him. We, we, we became friends, but I'm like, how did you guys get so big? He's like, post, 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 post. I post four, five, six times a day. That's, and I'm like, man, that's a lot of work. That's a freaking ton, a lot of work. And you can't just post garbage. It needs to be good content. But if guys like, Alex Armosi, which is a legend in sales. Gary V. Everybody knows who Gary V is. He, he has fingers in every single pie out there, it looks like. He started a small shop of a small wine shop. Now his empire is above a billion dollars. And how th did you see his old videos? Did you see his? He still had hair. He was talking and he's all crooked. He's all weird. But he did that for years and he wasn't even that good. It took him a long time. Like he was before people really went in there with the idea that I am a public speaker. I will record content like I'm sitting, like I'm standing on stage in front of 5,000 people. This is my crowd. This is who I'm talking to. But man, was it ever cringing. You watch his old video and I can't even imagine how he feels. He's like, oh, please delete this. I'm sure if he could, he'd have them all removed. But... This is the intent. You have to post. You have to create good content, excel, excellent content, because I think I was looking the other day, there's 220 million content creators on the planet. 220. 220 or 240. How are you How are you better than them? There's not a lot of Alex Armosi out there. There's not a lot of Gary Vee. All right. So where can people find you online to get more of <laughs> this great knowledge? Um, you can find me on plproduction.co. All my, like all, everything that I do when it comes to helping content creators is on there. Um, if you want to see my social media, you you go to nicolagan.com. All my stuff is there, but it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with showing out people to create content. I'm a very political guy. I like to talk about a lot of stuff that tend to piss people off. But hey, this is who I am. And this is what everybody's getting their feelings hurt today. So, yeah. But I'm all over the place. Name the platform. Look for real Nico Lagan and I'm there. It happens. Especially on Twitter slash X. You offend everybody there. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I'm a big fan of, of free speech. I believe in free speech 100%. I want to... I've always believed in giving people so much rope that they show me exactly the type of person that they are. I like to know who I'm dealing with. And when you're allowed to say, you know, free speech says that you should be able to say whatever you want. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't have consequences for what you say, but you should be allowed to say whatever you want. I want to know who you are. Gotcha. So with that, any final thoughts? Thank you for having me on. Hopefully I've helped one person. If I one person is somewhat inspired by this, I'm I I'm happy. All right. Thank you, Nico, for joining Digital Coffee Marketing Brew and sharing your knowledge on AI and content creation. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, man.
And thank you for listening. As always, please subscribe to Digital Coffee Marketing Brew on all your favorite podcasting apps. And leave a five-star review. It really does help. But join us next time as we talk to another great thought leader in the PR, Michael Lutri. All right, guys. Stay safe. Get to understanding AI and your content and your niche. And see you next time. Later.